Today I will discuss hyperkalemia induced EKG changes. I have 10 real world settings EKGs to show you today. But before that let's go over the hyperkalemia EKG changes that we discussed last video, the management of acute hyperkalemia. The link to that video is provided below. Let's start. I brought this picture from the Life in the Fast Lane website, very useful one and I highly recommend you refer to that website, a lot of EKG education there. And as you see as the CALS, the potassium level becomes higher we get more serious EKG and arrhythmias and the earliest change usually we see is the peak T wave and the peak T wave in hyperkalemia usually is narrow pointed and sharp compared to the one of acute coronary syndrome and I will have some examples to show you and this level this is a P wave widening and flattening PR prolongation P waves eventually disappear and we'll see this uh, soon on EKGs as it gets higher above seven bradyarrhythmias with all kind of bradyarrhythmias from sinus bradycardia high grade AV block bundle branch block fascicular block and and the bizarre QRS morphology. Whenever you see bizarre QRS morphology, thinks of hyperkalemia. And of course, the terminal rhythm above nine, development of sine waves, a systole, V-fib, PA with bizarre white complex rhythm. Now it's important to know this chronological order is not necessary. You may get a patient with these EKG changes right away. You don't have to see the peak T wave. You may see EKG right here. And these potassium levels are just rough levels to refer to. So you may see peak T wave at 7 and you may see a sine wave at 8. It's not necessarily these changes only happen at these potassium levels. So be vigilant and think about hyperkalemia whenever you see any of these changes. I'm sure you will save a lot of lives if you are able to recognize these changes early. Next we'll start with the EKG but before that if you would like to receive a PDF summary or a summary of this video please subscribe to my Substack page. Link is provided below. Any suspicion that the the EKG changes you see is secondary to hyperkalemia, initiate treatment immediately, give IV calcium immediately, and start the rest of treatment of hyperkalemia. Do not wait for the potassium level, please. So let's start with this, this tele monitor. As you see, seeing this wide complex tachycardia, the rate is 96, so it's not fast enough for ventricular tachycardia. This is a classic sine wave coat on the monitor, and the potassium for this patient was 9.2. This is scary from the moment you see there's wide QRS, bizarre QRS morphologies, and this peaked T wave. You see, it's narrow, sharp, pointed. This classic for hyperkalemia. QRS wide. You don't see any P wave. I really do, cannot recognize any P wave here. Whenever you see such EKG, this is hyperkalemia until proven otherwise. And very important, if you see this EKG, initiate treatment immediately. You don't have to wait for the potassium level. Just initiate treatment with IV calcium and the acute hyperkalemia treatment as we explained last video. Waiting for the potassium level that could take another 30 minutes or an hour. The patient will be dead by then. This is another EKG. Again, I really cannot recognize any P wave. The QRS remained narrow. There is a group beating there. Very important you see this sharp peak T wave. They may not be that tall, but compared to the QRS, they are really peak T waves. This is again hyperkalemia until proven otherwise. Initiate treatment immediately don't wait for the potassium level to come back the potassium level for this patient was 8.2 another EKG here we see white complex tachycardia but it's not fast enough to call it ventricular tachycardia I guess and looks like really sine waves here everywhere and you see the peak T wave whenever you see these sine waves or something very close to be a sine wave think of hyperkalemia immediately start treatment with IV calcium and other temporizing measure do not wait for potassium level when you suspect EKG changes related to hyperkalemia. This is another EKG. You could see the P wave. This is sinus bradycardia. The QRS is narrow. The axis is normal. But you see this peak T wave. But they are broad and wide and less pointed and asymmetric compared to the one in hyperkalemia. They're usually symmetric, narrow and pointed and sharp. And also you see some ST elevation in one AVL with reciprocal depression 3 and inferior leads. ST elevation in anterior leads. This looks like more anterior lateral st wall STEMI. This patient should go to the cath lab immediately and we can check potassium as well because we said before hyperkalemic and mimic STEMI. This is another EKG and I'm not sure if these are the P wave
waves kind of embedded or just before the QRS. The QRS looks really bizarre and I cannot tell really the elements of the QRS complex. Is there also a ST elevation here? But whenever I see this EKG, things of hyperkalemia, because remember hyperkalemia can mimic STEMI. And of course, if we suspect STEMI, we need to activate the cath lab and take the patient cath lab. But this patient, I would start also treatment for hyperkalemia immediately. This patient potassium level came back at eight. It's another EKG where we see wide complex, probably borderline tachycardia. It's not fast enough to call it ventricular tachycardia. I cannot recognize any P wave. There is a criteria of left bundle branch block. Again, they looks like almost sine waves, suspect hyperkalemia immediately, especially if these are acute changes. And I always recommend that if you have a baseline EKG to compare to, I would start treatment immediately before getting the potassium level. Another EKG with wide complex tachycardia and these peak T wave again remember they are narrow symmetric sharp and pointed when you see them suspect hyperkalemia immediately I hope by the end of this video the picture of these peak T waves stuck in your mind forever star treatment immediately do not wait for the potassium level another EKG here you may see some P waves still there the PR interval is still okay the QRS amplitude is small more interestingly look at these T waves they look normal to any regular person who's reading EKG but we always compare the T waves to their relative QRS if you compare it to these QRS these are peak T waves and we never look at this one compared to the QRS whenever you see these symmetric sharp pointed T waves thinks of hyperkalemia initiate IV calcium at the end if the potassium comes back normal the IV calcium is not going to cause much harm to the patient and this is the last EKG here you can see there is bradycardia with heart rate probably in 30s i don't see or recognize any p wave so this is probably and there is a wide qrs probably junctional scape rhythm or ventricular scape rhythm and you can see the t the, the t waves are peaked here so whenever you see this suspect hyperkalemia and initiate treatment immediately and then please let these ekg patterns stick in your mind and you will save lives remember do not wait for the potassium level if you suspect ekg changes from hyperkalemia star treatment immediately iv calcium is not going to kill your patient if the potassium come back normal if you would like to receive a pdf summary of this video please subscribe to my substack page link is provided below Below. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like, share it with your colleagues, and thanks for watching.